So this is the DAZ website, or Days 3D. You can find it at days3d.com, and you can download Dazed for free. And it compares itself to Maya and 3DS Max, but it doesn't quite do as many things as Maya does. It does a lot of things, but not as many. Then this is the store, and they have different things you can buy. If you look at the vanity and the charm, looks like it caters to child molesters and perverts. But we're here for this, which is the Victoria Textures. They cost about 200 bucks. There's a lot of garbage on there, and most of it is scenes or clothing or jewelry. But this is what the program looks like when you first open it up. And this is what we're using it for in conjunction with Maya. We want to use the generic Genesis model. We just double click on it and it opens up this null model. And then we click on the shaping panel and go to the editor and it opens up nine sliders that can adjust to the shape of the model. And if we go over to the right side under parameters and click on actor, then it will open up about another 20 sliders, which let us control the finer details of the model. So you can increase its feminine or its masculine attributes. You can also make it a child and then has a couple sliders that deal with weight and body volume. Takes a while to, to get used to this. So you can just play around with this prefab model builder and figure out what you want to make. If you don't like the sliders, you can enter the numbers in automatically. Or if you don't think that you're getting enough of an influence, then you can click on the slider and then click on this button down here, go to parameter settings, and you can increase the max parameter. So that way you can get a greater influence. We're gonna give this guy a huge pot belly. And by mixing and matching these different attributes in the the editor here, you can come up with different body shapes fairly easily. Here I deselected my model. I'm used to using the, the pan and zoom functions in Maya. But here you want to click on the icon and drag, and that will allow you to pan and zoom and dolly in the scene. You can also use your mouse wheel, which will allow you to get closer and farther away. I can't figure out why I lost my editors, but that's because I deselected the model. So you select the model, and then you have access to the sliders here. And we're gonna go through a few of the ones for the face. See, you can move the ears up and down. And then you can move them in and out. And these finer sliders here let you adjust the close details of the face. So I'm not gonna make you sit here and watch me go through every single one of these sliders, but just it's good to know that they're there. And in about 10 minutes, you can go through and you can make a custom model that is fairly unique, a lot faster than it would take to make one in Maya. So then we want to go down to File and Export, and then we want to export as an FBX. I'm just gonna save it here on my desktop. We'll call it uh, Fat Guy. This is probably what I'm gonna look like when I get done with this video. And the regular options should work just fine. We don't need to export any of these other things since we're just interested in the mesh. This will save our FBX to the desktop. It's pretty fast. 
Now we're going to open up Maya. And import our model. We'll just open it. Go to the desktop, find Fat Guy FBX, and import. And there it is. As you can see, they are fairly large models, but then again, so are the ones from Soft Image and the ones from Mudbox. Seems that Maya uses a much smaller convention than all of the other software programs. So this is what it looks like when it first comes into Maya and it is fully rigged with a skeleton. But it also has this extra joint sticking down between the legs and I don't like that. So I'm going to show you how to delete it because it doesn't really seem to fit into a Maya scene. So we're going to select the mesh and then make sure that you're in the polygon menu and we'll go to mesh separate and then mesh combine and it will separate the mesh from the skeleton. Then we want to middle click on the hip and drag it up above and then we can delete the extra joint. Then we'll take both of the skeleton and the mesh and we'll go to bind skin smooth bind then we're going to go down to the pelvis joint to make sure that it actually worked okay it seems to be working after that we want to create a locator and we're going to raise the locator up to the top of the model so that we can easily grab it and move it around our scene if we have several models in the scene, we can just grab the locator and it will give us access to the skeleton and we'll be able to move the model. We want to parent the skeleton under it. We're going to rename the locator. Then we'll also rename the mesh. Call it skin, don't touch. Because if we alter it afterwards, then it will mess up our model. So once we have the locator, you can see that we can move it around and it doesn't mess up the model. I'm going to scale it down because it's a little bit larger than I like the model working in Maya with. And we're going to save it. On the other hand, I've noticed that most of the models I use in the further videos, I use this other method. If the first thing I do is I group the model as soon as it comes out of the dazed program, then I select the hip joint and the mesh and I drag them up above the root joint and then delete the root joint. Then I create the locator and move it into position and parent the skeleton under it and also scaling it up so that you can see it more easily. Using this method it is faster and it also groups the entire model under the group for easy importing and exporting. Also it skips the step of having to reskin the model because the skin transformations that come with the dazed model are generally pretty good and it's difficult to have to go through and paint all of them all over again. So using this method is actually faster and better. If you grab the group though, you'll get this skeleton spall. So you want to grab it by the locator so that it doesn't get all screwed up. This method is actually better than the other method. So back to our scene with our fat guy here, we're going to look at the shaders. It comes as a FBX, but for some reason, whenever I import FBXs, they never 
import the shaders. The naming convention, however, on dazed models is pretty good. And so what we're going to do is we're going to select these shaders and we're going to import the textures we were talking about earlier. When you get these highly detailed textures from Days, like I said, you have to pay about 200 bucks to get one of these and then you install it onto your computer and it will import these high detail textures which are set up with the UVs for days. And you have to go into this file that is buried under a bazillion files. And what you get are these dozen or so pictures. They give you a bump map and a specular map and a diffuse map. And there is about five different skin transformations here. So once we find those, we're going to select our shader and go to the color and add a file. And then we're going to open the file and go through the detailed process of finding this texture map, which is totally buried in your My Documents folder. What I've done is take all of the textures and then move them to a general folder because I usually use them when I'm using Maya and I don't really use Dazed for anything except for the model builder and editor that it comes with. So you may find it easier to do the same thing too instead of having to dig through 15 folders to find your your dazed textures but once you find them then you want to link the proper texture to the proper shader in Maya in this case we're gonna start with the face just gonna use the diffuse map and we'll move this down into position and instead of going through and adding a new file for each texture, we are just going to parent each of the shaders to the single file texture. Going through and painfully doing the inputs and outputs for each one. Like I said, there's only about five different textures that you need. And I'm also adding in bump maps, but we want to reduce the size of the bump map. It comes in at one and I've found that the bump maps work better at 0.1 or 0.01. They have a, a better looking texture to them. The specular maps work, but you generally have to take them to Photoshop. So when we're looking at our model here, we can notice that our UV maps don't line up exactly. And that's because they're designed for the Victoria model and not the Genesis model, which we're using, but they are generally pretty close. If you notice, there's a white spot at the back of his head. And right now I'm going to do a quick render to make sure that the UVs are actually not lined up because sometimes they look this way, but when you render them, they come out fine. And so the reason he has a white spot on the back of his head is because I have mismatched one of the textures with one of the shaders. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm going to move the texture to the correct shader so that the UVs line up on the texture map. And then we'll go into the UV texture editor, which is kind of difficult to see because they have all of the UVs lined up on one panel and they're all on the same model. So once we get them, then we want to select the UVs on the texture map. You can Select the UVs you don't want by pressing control click and you can add UVs by pressing shift click. And what we'll do is the reason they won't let me select them is I have to select the UVs in the UV texture editor. Then I'm pressing control Z to go back. And then once I unselect the UVs that I don't want, it goes to the correct texture map. And you can see that the UVs are off the texture just a little bit. So I'm going to go through and move them down. It's a pretty simple process. It takes a little while, but it's a lot faster than having to sculpt and paint and texture your own model. You can basically make a generic dazed model in about an hour as opposed to creating your own model over the period of like a week. So it's kind of a complicated process, but if you go through, then you can move the UVs around 
in the UV texture editor and you can get them lined up fairly easily. It's a little confusing, but a moderate user in Maya should still be able to do this fairly easily. So we're just gonna do the head for now. I'm gonna go back and do the rest of them later. But like I said, you can get a fairly detailed model in less than an hour. It took me about 10 minutes to make this in Dazed and perhaps maybe another 15 minutes to play around with it in Maya. We have a fully rigged, fully painted model after about 25 minutes. It's probably gonna take me about another 30 to fix the UVs on it. The one problem that I've noticed that they have with the dazed models is they're all white. And if you look at this guy's face, he seems to be white European. And they sell other nationalities for dazed, but even their minority nationalities are still very white European looking. They don't tend to have the button crest on the nose like Irish people, which is what I'm trying to simulate here. It's pretty easy to do to get this button nose that usually identifies Irish people. And they don't have the broader nose ridge like you often find in black people from the Dominican or the Bahamas. They have this wider nose ridge. It's very difficult to to model that by hand. You can do it afterwards, but it would be kind of nice if they had a slider for different nationalities. And also in Asian cultures, they usually tend to have flat cheekbones, which I'm trying to simulate terribly here. It doesn't work very well. But Asian cultures usually have flat cheekbones and also a skin fold which covers the chelera and the tear duct, which identifies them as having a uniquely Asian face. Let's see if I can kind of show what that looks like here. Just move up this edge a little bit. Towards the end of this video, my computer started wigging out. I don't even know why. But in Asian cultures, they have this skin fold that covers the chelera and the tear duct. And it's distinctly Asian, identifies their nationality above all other nationalities. So Dazed is pretty good if you need to make a lot of models really fast and you don't have a lot of time to work on them. If you want to use them for the background or just to give the sense that there's a large city. But unfortunately, they're generally all white. So it has its pros and its cons, but this tutorial series is showing how to go from dazed to face shift as fast as possible. So I hope you enjoy this series.